35. Yeah. yeah. I'm sure you got to suffer to get to that weight class. Not my body type. I've never, I've never had to suffer. The, the hardest part for me is actually holding onto the muscle. Oh. So that's what, that's why Mike's trying to just give me as big as I possibly can and just hold on as much as we can. You know, I was thinking about Breon last year, this last Olympia, he had to make weight and he was like, I can't remember how much weight. I think he, I feel like he was like 10 or 12 pounds above his weight and he was already shredded. And I was like, I don't know how this guy's going to make his weight class. He did it, but I'm sure it had some, uh, some type of, you know, effect on his conditioning or his look on stage him sucking down like that. All right. So we are live. This is uh, my muscle connection. What number three or four? I think it's number four for us. Four. All right. We're talking about, um, common bodybuilding fitness, um, fat loss myths and misconceptions. A lot of stuff that people, uh, I, I, I blame the media for a lot of it, honestly, is how people get these misconceptions because they're trying to sell a product. So they'll tell you all kinds of bullshit to gear you towards buying this. And then when, you know, they come see me or come talk to you guys, we have to like unfuck all this knowledge that they've gotten that's false. It, because it, so today we're going to talk a lot about some of the common things we hear that's not true and give you guys like the right answers on that stuff. So for instance, um, did you send me some good ones? What's, um, do you have yours in front of you or? No, I don't. Do you have them brought okay. up? So, yeah, I do. So let's see. Let's go with uh, training on empty stomach burns fat. What do you think? I don't know. Not, not, like, yeah, you're smiling on that. What do you think? Well, <laughs> well training on an empty stomach, I, I guess it, it depends on if you're trying to be a bodybuilder. I don't think it's, I don't know, man. It's just, you know, I hear guys like, you know, I hear, some big guys used to train on an empty stomach. It depends. Like if you eat a big meal be, the night before full of carbs and you wake up early in the morning and train, or, you know, just, I guess, I, honestly, I just don't see no benefit in it. I feel like you're just going to break down muscle tissue. Yep. But if it depends on your goals, like if you're trying to be a bodybuilder or, you know, you're trying to be a powerlifter or a strong man competitor, I just don't think it's a wise decision. If you're just trying to, you know, shrink and just, I don't know, lose muscle. That's the way to go. But at the end of the day, you're starving yourself. You're depriving yourself. So now is this empty stomach or faster? Faster. Okay. Okay. I think like sleeping eight hours, waking up and then going straight to the gym. No, fuck that. No, I do not agree with that. Yeah. I made that mistake for 10 months. I was, when I first started weightlifting, it was uh, 2013. I would sleep. I get up at four in the morning I would take two scoops of Super Pump Max, my uh, still favorite pre-workout to this day, it's, uh, eight years later. And um, I would go work out on the ship and I just didn't understand. And like, you know, I like everybody else, you you know, you can't blame yourself. You got to blame something else. So you blame your genetics. You know what I mean? Like, oh man, genetic kids can't get big, bro. So, um, <laughs> and I, I just, I just didn't know what I was doing, you know, and I would just lift fast and I see this all the time. It's, Really, really big, believe it or not, in the military. People like to wake up, lift weights on an empty stomach, and then go start their day. Like, you feel good. But yeah. I think from a scientific perspective, uh, Jed, correct me if I'm wrong. You may know more about this about me. But fat, I think, has an extra molecule to it, which makes it difficult to break down. That's why when you do, um, when you do cardio, you know, you do slow, sustained cardio. It's because you're giving your body time to break down the fat. The, the faster you go, which you know, when you lift weights, you need a lot of energy to lift. You know, you, it requires a faster demand of energy. What's easier to break down? Amino acids. So your body will break down that muscle to fuel you to get the weight up. So it won't actually burn fat. So here, right? here, yeah, here's the deal with that. So your body has um, mainly three things you can use for energy, carbs, fat, and protein. So your body is going to utilize carbs first because that's what they're designed to do. Now, once those are gone, your body has a choice. Do I need body fat or do I need muscle tissue? It's going to decide that depending on the intensity of what you're doing. And usually I would say the best measure of that's your heart rate. So when I do people's cardio programs, I calculate their heart rate using, um, I think, Craven formula, the 220 minus age, whatever. So I do that. And that way, if they go over the top number, it's too intense. They'll start burning muscle because – it can turn muscle into energy just as fast as it can carbohydrates. Fat, it, like you said, it takes a lot longer. So you want to, if you're fasted, you want to push to where you need excess energy, but you don't need it like super immediately. 
So that's why you keep your heart rate kind of low to mid range when you do the cardio. So if you go fast right. and you go in the gym and you start training, um, when it comes down to the, um, the muscle itself, that is a very intense exercise and it needs to replace that ATP and shit really quickly. So to do that, it has to break muscle. So you're literally cannibalizing yourself by going in the gym after sleeping for eight hours, not eating and training like that. Yeah. That's why I don't like doing hit. I like hit would be post workout or hit would be during the day, like not in the morning when you first wake up. If you're gonna work out in the mornings, like you, you're like I love training sometimes as soon as I get up or when I was on the ship, I had to do it. I had to be in the gym at five. So I would get up at 345. I would do two scoops of glycofuse and uh, a scoop and a half of proven eggs. So that's like eight egg whites and glycofuse. Drank that. Wait about you know forty five minutes to let that let that get into your bloodstream, and then you should have enough to go hit the weights. That's that's what if you have to work out in the morning, make sure you get something. It doesn't have to be a big breakfast. You can drink or baby rice, believe it or not. Uh, I had to do that when I was um, I was working crazy hours on the ship. I get up at three. I would do uh, four eggs and uh, drink baby rice. Yeah, I had a I had a women's physique competitor do the stingray quite a long time ago. It was like two thousand fourteen, I think. And she could only work out early in the morning. So she would do uh, a glycofuse and an isolate about on her way to the gym. And then she would do it again afterwards. And then she would have her first solid meal. Now, usually I don't like that because I like getting solid food in. But at the same time, this was the only thing we could do to work in that. So, I mean, sometimes you have to bend your rules a little bit depending on the situation. Yeah. And it worked. And she she lost body fat. I've got one of progress photos up somewhere on my page. She looks really good. So um, this is long, like you said, as long as something's in there, it can break down. Yep. What were you going to say, Chris? Sorry to me cut you off, dude. Uh, I completely forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> Sorry, it's my fault. All right, bro. <laughs> what, um, did you have anything, any misconceptions or myths that you wanted to bring up that we could, we could debunk, Chris? Uh, just go off the list because I'm, I'm still thinking about some things. So, um. Here's one that I just preached this one today. And it goes back to the cardio thing I was talking about is that running burns fat. And I see people like get up and they run two miles before they eat. And it's the same concept as training. It, you're, it's an intense exercise running. Your heart rate gets above the fat burning zone. You start tearing shit down. Also mm -hmm. running also makes your body utilize energy better when you become a better cardiovascular shape. So as far as burning body fat, it's not the best thing to do. Yeah, over it's going to increase your calorie caloric burning over the day a little bit. Not as much as weight training, I don't think. But in the end, just the either the interval or the solid the heart rate based cardio is the best options for burning fat. You know, and I'll tell you how what what I usually describe to people, especially guys that have been in boot camp, you always have those couple of fat kids that are barely on the line for passing their BCA and they can run. You're like, fuck man, how these guys can run like that? Obviously running doesn't burn body fat. Cause this fat fuck just fucking beat me on a mile <laughs> and a half run. I was in air crew school and there was this chubby ginger kid that could run like a motherfucker, but he was overweight. And that's when I started realizing, damn running doesn't do shit for burning body fat. Let's what see. Else we got? Um, I like this one. Um, cardio before training, good or bad? <laughs> Same thing. Yeah, gotcha, Chris. There's a lot of people that do that. They're like, I, I know quite a few bodybuilders that actually did their cardio prior to training, which I always ask them. I was like, doesn't that take away from your training session? Like, doesn't it, like you don't train as hard, right? You just wouldn't that make you a little bit just just wouldn't it just exhaust make you a little bit more exhausted for training? Wouldn't you think? You know, but you know, I could save for after my workout, or I just do fasted cardio prior to me eating my meal one, which my fasted cardio nowadays is just walking at a really slow pace around the neighborhood with my dog. But <laughs> yeah. How, um, so if you get in there and why, why do we do cardio? We do it to burn fat, right? So if you do it at the beginning of the workout, you're burning your carbs back to what we were talking about a minute ago. So yeah. now when you're weight training, you're weight training and your carbs are running out too early. Now you're back to cannibalizing your body because you burnt your shit off on the treadmill. It makes sense to do it the opposite way. Use the carbs for the workout and then control your heart rate during cardio to burn off fat after the workout. It also yeah. depends on what you're training for, I think, as well, yeah. too. You know, yeah. if like when uh, when I was a, a search and rescue swimmer, I would run four miles to the pool, swim a mile, run two to four miles back like it was nothing. Or I would run and I would do, you know, type of, you know, PT, running upstairs, stuff like that, you know, two, three miles there. 
And my goal at the time wasn't to really build muscle or get big. My goal was to have extreme cardiovascular endurance. If I had to go, you know, swim under fucking, you know, fire or something. So, you know, what, what is, if you're going to do that, the question is, is what is your goal? If your goal is to be a bodybuilder, no, do not do your cardio beforehand. If your goal is to, you know, go be a Navy SEAL and you want to, you know, freaking do cardio and then hit some CrossFit. Yeah. I think that would, you know, then benefit because you need to be, you need, you need to be um, versatile in all different, different aspects. Plus that's a workout. You're not, like you said, you're not doing it for fat burning. So you're doing that shit as a workout. So you're going to eat before and after, unless you want to be able to do it fasted in case like some emergency happens, you get called out to go out and swim and you haven't had chow yet, which I can understand occasionally. But in the end, like you said, your goal is not cosmetic at that point it's performance. And that way you're, you're going by a different set of rules at that point. Yeah. So, all right, let's, um, (laughs) I like this one. You don't, you ever see how people think the more they sweat, the more fat they burn. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll, I'll, I'll go last one. Chris, what do you think? I don't have anything to say on this. You know, it's just the more, the more you sweat, the more you burn fat. Yeah, I don't have people anything. will start sweating and want to keep shit hot because they think they're burning off more fat. Well, I had a coach that used to make me wear a lot of clothes and he's like, it's going to just get you more conditioned if you cover up. And you know, I actually believed that myself at one point. So yeah, but no. What do you think, Dibs? I think the sauna should be illegal. I don't think a sauna does anything. I think when you go sit in a sauna, you're de you're dehydrating your muscles. You're I don't think if the I think the benefits don't nearly outweigh the damage that you're doing. Like people are like yeah, I'm gonna sit in the sauna trying to lose weight and get in shape. You know, keep your body hot raises raises your body temperature, bro. So when you raise your body temperature, bro, you're burning more fat, bro. You don't even need to do cardio. Like that's fucking people's logic. You know, that's the shit you hear down in South Jersey. Um, but no, it's all bullshit. You know, um, I would say maybe it's a metaphor for sweating means that you're working hard. So you're burning fat, but just because you're specifically sweating, I'm Italian. I sweat 24 hours a fucking day, you know, and I still got fat on my back. So I don't know. I don't I'm know. Sweat when I eat. <laughs> <laughs> now here's, here's the thing about raising the body temperature. If you want to raise your body temperature, you actually need to get cold so that your body starts trying to bring up body temperature to regulate. So if you want to train and burn fat, more fat when you're training, you need it cold as fuck in there. Mm-hmm. That's, it's just like um, drinking cold water. Your body has to burn calories to heat that shit up when it gets in your body. So it's, it's, it's the opposite of what people are thinking. Getting hotter and stuff, you're just making it easier on your body. You need to get cold if you want to keep um, your metabolic rate a little bit higher. Yeah. I mean, the, the huge difference, it may make a difference over a period of time, really. But if we want to get down to the nitty gritty, you, if you want to raise your body temperature to burn more calories, you need to get cold, not hot. Yeah. So. Um, I, I got one. Yeah. What is the best diet? There is no one diet that fits in. Right? Everybody's different. How do I become a smart ass to answer this question? <laughs> it's like. Whichever one that you can stick to that fucking works. <laughs> right? There we go. That's perfect. That's, perfect. That's the answer. <laughs> yeah. So the, I get this question a lot because, you know, and you know what? I follow the fucking years. In 2015, everyone was doing macros. Everyone was doing macros. In 2016, everyone's fucking doing keto. Keto this and keto that. And in 2017, it's paleo. And then something, and then everyone's doing plant-based. I'm like, the fuck's plant-based, bro? You're a vegan bitch. Like, stop <laughs> Stop doing, stop with this, this plant-based bullshit. Here, I got a new diet for you. It's called shit in a bottle, piss in a bucket, take a tablespoon every two hours, you'll lose weight. So if I went on <laughs> fucking, if I went on bodybuilding.com, made that flashy, IFBB Pro does the shit piss diet. People <laughs> fucking do it. It's the truth. You know why? It's because it's because you're looking for the next fad. You're just looking on the next thing to jump on. You know, yeah. so I always tell people, here's, here's what it is for the best diet. Find out how many calories you need for your body type. Spread those fucking calories out through six meals a day for your body type. Work out consecutively for a fucking year. All right. I'm about to go on a fucking rant right now. Cause I get so fucking pissed. No, that's not going to work for normal people. 
I'm so tired of this four week bullshit, man. Four week of keto, then four week of this, and then oh, I need ice cream but, in my life and suck my balls. Okay, now, I'm tired of it. This is what you. This is what people ask. What can I do? What can I take to where I don't have to change my diet or where I don't have to work out? That's one of the number one things I got asked when I worked at Vitamin Shop or you know Vitamin World or even GNC, and I was like, uh, nothing. Whatever's going to give you the biggest, whatever's going to give you the biggest commission to sell. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, after I worked at GNC, that's what I did. I would just make up stuff. But then P3s, crazy. man. <laughs> I used to work there. I know. Oh man, man, the Vita Chews and the little selling my like the P6. Oh, this shit's start stronger than steroids, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I used to say that, you know. Oh my God. I used to work at the one at Pro Ridge Mall. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah, that's one of the big ones. So they want you to sell a lot of shit there. I think the rules so, have completely changed now. Before, here's the thing though, all right. I'm a little offended by this shit. All right. Because <laughs> before the internet, all right, in 2005, we didn't have all I had was uh, all I had was a GNC guy. So I walk in, I see knots and muscles, like, oh, hey man, what what can I take, bro? Here, take halodrol, take two. And I'm like, 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 and he like he like takes the little key out and he slides it out and like, oh my god, he's got this halodrol. All we had was a guy at GNC. Like I would just do exactly what he said. Yeah, the GNC guy said this. I was six, we've seven, all been there. I don't fucking know. <laughs> you know then we've all been there, dude. You guys it's have up. us now, you know what I mean? They got us, you know, professional athletes and trainers fucking, you know, hey, we're, we're telling you the real deal, not what fuck. We're not, nobody here is trying to sell shit. You know what I mean? We're, we're just really just trying to get information out there just for you guys. Dude, if, um, if uh, Dylan, his name was watching, he, he sold me so much shit at GNC at fucking Schofield because I was just like you're describing when I go in there and get my cell tech nitro tech stack and thought I was gonna oh be a God. fucking badass. That fucking cell tech, the big hotel of shit. Dude, <laughs> it was Jay <laughs> Cutler, man. I loved him. Shit. I loved him. I would buy whatever the fuck Jay Cutler sold. I didn't give a shit. I, I swear the flavor was actually labeled. I swear I could see it. Rat's asshole. Like, that was the flavor that it yeah. was. Goodbye uniform allowance. I'd go right in oh there and fucking buy all that. Yeah, dude. I spent so much. I didn't, even, I didn't even eat. I used to just take Animal Pack and drink BCAs all day. And I used to do that shit before football games, thinking I was going to I was gonna do something. I would take an Animal Pack before a game. I haven't ate anything all day. Drink a protein shake. Be pissing fucking neon and shit. <laughs> yeah, I'm <don't> fucking dehydrated. <laughs> don't, don't know anything about nutrition. You're just taking a whole bunch of supplements. Dude, so let me go back to the the diet thing really quick because I want to I want to make a point before I forget. So back to like the the fattish diets with the people talking about the caveman diet and shit. I'm like, you're not a fucking caveman. Like you realize how advanced our bodies are since caveman times. Like the brains are bigger. We do different shit. Our bodies changed. You're not a goddamn Neanderthal. So why in the fuck do you want to eat like one? And then. Is when you told the story about keto, it reminded me I had somebody that could not stick on a diet and they wanted to do some fattish shit. And I think they they said something like, Hey, how about, I've been hearing about keto? Can we try it? My response was, You can't stick on the fucking diet I'm giving you right now. Why in the fuck am I going to write a keto diet for you to not do? Yeah. Like shit. Cause you're wanting, and that's why I told him, like, You're not trying to lose weight. You're trying to be fattish. Stop that shit. Do what the fuck I tell you and you'll get it off. Like, it's funny because um, people will do all these fattish diets and shit and then come to me or you or somebody and we'll tell them the right answer and it'll be the only thing they haven't done. And it's like to where there's no other answer on the planet. This is the only thing you haven't done. It has to work. And they'll start questioning it because they didn't see it on some goddamn infomercial at three in the fucking morning. And you're like, what the fuck is wrong with you, man? Like seriously, the process of elimination you have eliminated everything except this diet I'm giving you. And you're still trying to convince me that it doesn't work because like Dr. Oz didn't talk about some shit on his stupid ass show. Dr. Oz. Fuck that fucking quack. Coffee bean extract. Take yeah, that. That's all, you need. Weight. that's all you need, man. The coffee bean, the green, green coffee bean, whatever the hell it was. I'm still convinced of selling my shit piss diet protocol. Maybe a minute. <laughs> <laughs> the shit piss diet. Fucking sub diet. Fucking bodybuilding.com. Jesus Christ, man. At least they shit the Hawaii fast. I'll give them that much. You know, I um, I've done uh, I've done all the diets. I've done keto. I really liked it. I've done carb cycling. I've done macro. And you know, the I think the end of the end of the day it is exactly what you said. I stuck exactly to the principles that my coach told me, and 
if I made mistakes, which shit happens, you know, you just be honest with your coach and be like, Hey man, um, I had too much, I didn't have enough fat on this day or, Oh shit. I didn't know my scale broke. You know, I had a, a time where my scale broke and I was instead of eating seven ounces, I was eating like 13 ounces a day. This was last year, by the way, you know what I mean? I'm like, man, this chick is just, I'm going through it pretty quick. And then I weighed, like, I got a water bottle. I put on there. I was like, 23 like 23 ounces in a day 16 ounces like fuck so you know even even at the highest levels shit happens like don't be afraid to make mistakes when it you know when it comes to your diet but be honest with your coach and be honest with yourself you fuck up move the fuck on um but stick to the principles if you're doing macros you're counting your macros count your fucking macros if you're doing carb cycling do it stick to the fucking plan if you tell your coach honestly what's going on, he'll be able to fix it faster because he's going to know you fucked up, but he's got to find out where you fucked up to fix it. If you don't tell him, you're going to be, you're going to be fucked. You're not going to be able to get back into progress for a long time until you finally, either he figures it out or you just tell him. Yep. Um, let's go into, um, take a minute and go into, I want to know some of the excuses you guys get for why they can't diet or why they can't train. Cause I think that was one of the other things I'd put down for us to think about too. And, um, I know I've got mine because me being a trainer, I hear this shit all the time, but I want to know what you guys hear. Like Chris, if someone were to come up to you in the gym and ask you like, what do you do, man? Like, are you taking creatine? And, you know, they're talking about your training program and stuff. And then you tell them the hard shit. And then they're like, you know, I don't know if I want to do that. Like what's the excuse they would give you for why they the, more, the, the number one thing I always hear is like, I can't eat the same thing day in and day out. It's not even, it's, that's, the, that's the main thing I hear. Oh, I can't, I can't eat the same thing day day in and day out. I have to have variety in my diet. I'm like, okay, you can just interchange your proteins, and your carbs is pretty much the same thing. Carbs and proteins are interchangeable, but they don't understand that, you know, but uh, yeah, just, you know, eating this, most people, they get afraid of eating the same thing day in and day out. They have to have variety of foods. So that's number one. Because their life's fucking boring. That's why they have to be entertained through their goddamn food. (laughs) Yeah, true. I'm not a foodie anymore. So like I used to be one of those people like, I had to have a cheat meal or something every other day or at least once a week. I'm good now. I don't need that shit. I was just, um, you can change the seasonings. You can change the way you fix it. Now, here's the thing. They say they can't eat the same thing every day. Yes, you fucking can. You just won't. That's your well, problem. Most, most people do. Most people eat the same shit every day. Like, oh, I'm not, yeah. I'm not on that diet. But they don't realize what they eat is their diet. They eat, a, they eat the same fucking cereal every day. They have the same shit every day for bro. Like they had a little goldfish or crackers and I go to the same fast food joint every fucking day. They do the same thing. They just don't realize it. Yep. What you got, Dibs? I don't get excuses. Anybody who comes to me knows they better not fucking come with excuses. I don't deal with it. I don't, I'll be I'll be very straight with them. You know, if they fuck up, and most <clears> of them are very honest with me. They're like, hey, man, I did my cardio this week. And I said, well, that's going to fuck up your progress. That's going to fuck up everything we did. Um and if like I caught one of my athletes, um, uh, he was actually, he now is probably one of the most dedicated guys I ever had. I caught him on prep drinking a beer. His uncle tagged him. He had one beer and I fucking wrecked his soul. He almost started crying. Right. So right. anybody who comes to me, I'm the, I'm the most chill. Listen, anybody, I'm the most chill guy. I want to help anybody. I'm very, very flexible when like, Hey, I don't have this equipment, so I can't cook for this much or, Hey, I'm, I can only eat tuna or this. I was like, like, if you can't do it, then just quit. Go find somebody else. I don't, I don't have the time for people who aren't committed. So it's very, with me, it's the people know there's, there's either you're in or I don't give a fuck. I'll go on to someone else. Now, those are the type of people I'm going to work with anywhere committed people. Now, while we're on the topic of food, I want to bring something up because I've actually heard this excuse a few times and it, it fucking triggers me and I'll tell you why. <clears throat> I hear the, I, I, I want a better relationship with food. And I'm thinking, listen, you're the motherfucker in control. All right, food is not a person. Food, food, you don't compromise with it. You don't make deals with it. You are in charge. So this, I don't know what people mean when they say that. It sounds like somebody from my 600-pound life trying to make an excuse for eating a bologna sandwich after they're fucking eating everything else. I don't understand that. Like a better relationship with food. Like you food got in a fight yesterday? What the fuck are you talking about? Like, don't give me that shit. You're just, what you're doing is you're making excuses so you can eat whatever the fuck you want and, and think that you're making, that you're, you know, getting by or making it, making it work in your diet. You're just making up fucking excuses to do whatever you want. And I, I just like, God damn it. I want to know who the fuck came up with that saying because I just, you don't have relationships with inanimate objects. I mean, Jesus Christ. I just, um, <clears throat> if, if, 
I, I just, I don't know, man. I see that as, as um, somebody being mentally weak because well, you are in control of food. You are in control of what you put in your body. You're in control of your results and what you're doing. If you have to cooperate and reason with food, you have a fucking problem. But there's so many people out there. Like some people, like when they get emotional, they're emotional eaters. Or, you know, me, if I get emotional or I get upset, I lose my appetite. But a lot of people will go eat when they get upset. I used to be one of those people to eat a whole can of peanut butter when I was dieting when I got upset. I don't do that anymore because I just lose my appetite. But I think some people, people do that because they, you know, how sometimes you don't eat for a while and you're really cranky and then you eat and you start feeling better. I think yeah. because of that one experience where it did help, you think every time you eat, you're going to feel good. And that's where that comes in. Yeah, but it can be something that's tied into more of like a psychological thing as well. See, if you, if everything in your life has been like, you get rewarded for food or your family, all you like, you can remember happiness associated with food. When you're upset, you're going to go eat. So you can look at it like that too. That's big here. Ultimately, like you know what it comes down to is that it's not fun. Flexible dining. How does it work? I need ice cream in my life. And it, I like dressing. I can't have dressing. And just shut the fuck up. <laughs> just just yeah. fucking eat healthy. Here's the reality. Eating healthy sucks fucking balls. Eating the same thing over and over again fucking sucks. Eating the same thing every day for the rest of your life isn't fun. And that's what you're having trouble with is it's not fucking fun. You know, just... Yeah have a cheat meal or two for that week and then treat the rest of the fucking mm. week the same. I see people that diet all week and then fuck it up all through the weekends and then start, I'm starting again on Monday. Like, how do you live your life like that? I, yeah. I can't see it. I get, I'm starting again on Monday, guys. I been. I saw a guy who bought sweet potatoes. Yeah, man, I'm starting to eat sweet potatoes, you know, trying to change my life. Nine years of sweet potatoes later, I'm like, all right, bro. <laughs> Yeah, it's not. If, if it was fun and this were easy, <clears throat> we wouldn't want it. It wouldn't be attainable. There would be no worth to it because you can get it whenever you want. So is there's, I mean, there's no work involved in getting it. So if it was all fun and easy and shit, it would not be valuable. Nobody would want it. Nobody would see it as like an upper percentage of people that can fucking do it. Yeah. That's one of the things that makes it something everybody wants is that not everybody can fucking get it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I don't think people, for, people forget that and if you're already on the mindset of cutting corners by trying to find a fad program or a pill, you need to hang it the fuck up and reset yourself because you're on for a rude goddamn awakening real quick. Very true. Um, this one is pretty basic, but I want to bring it up because one of my best examples of this, you remember Shell, right, Dibs? Janita? Oh, yeah, I remember her. Okay, now, you remember where she started at the beginning of the year and she wasn't getting called out. And by the end of the year, she was finishing like top 10, top five. Yeah, first call yeah, out. yeah she, her, she made <clears> significant changes. She changes. dieted and competed and got better and got better and got better every time because she did not fucking quit. I still talk about her to clients today when they tell me about how shit, how they're feeling tired and they're feeling like shit. And I tell about, I mean, she never bitched or anything. The reason I bring this up is because when I hear people like, man, I don't know if I can go to the gym. I'm tired. Tired? Dude, that means it's working. Get your fucking ass in the gym. If you ain't tired, there's something wrong. Like, that's like, you know how many people got up that you're going to stand on stage with that are tired today? And so you're yeah. going to get behind because you want a little nap today? Man, shut. I get so tired of that shit. Man, I'm tired all the goddamn time. I am always tired. I've been tired since I've been born. Like, I don't think I've ever had full energy in my <laughs> life, except when I get pissed off and start ranting about stupid shit like this. Yeah, and <laughs> I just get, and you know, when, you, when, when people are like, I just can't get out of bed. Obviously, I, let me you tell you how to fix this enough. problem. Let me tell you how to fix this problem. Turn around, put your feet on the ground, stand the fuck up. Guess what? You're out of bed. Yeah. It's that easy. But people like, like, is there something holding you down? No. Get the fuck up. When you're in boot camp, you don't have that fucking option. They come and start throwing shit. You get the fuck up. I don't care how damn tired you are. But I, I get that's like the simplest barrier to break. <clears throat> and most of the time, if you get up moving around, you'll start feeling better. But you want to diet, you want to lose fat, and you want to, you want to, for those of you that want to compete, you're going to be tired. It's expected. And if you're not tired, something's fucking wrong. Um, what do you think? Yeah, I, uh, I also want to look at the other side of that as well. Um, and that is also knowing when to rest as well. Just, look, there's a difference between being tired and, and, you know, hey, I just worked eight hours today. I got to go to the gym today. I'm fucking tired, but I'm going to go through the gym anyway. Yeah. And working out seven days a week is also don't do. Don't do. So understand there's a difference. Like 
Um, and this is where I always quote, we always quote, you know, MJ and Kobe, you know, MJ, MJ knew when to rest. And uh, when it came to Kobe, Kobe, um, Tim was always telling me that Kobe did better when he had Kobe doing less and just what was effective. So, you know, if you're tired, but you're in the gym three hours, maybe you're working out too long. You know, you don't have to, you don't, you don't have to, you know, stay, oh yeah, I only get four hours of sleep a night, bro. You know what I mean? Like, look, you, you think Kobe only got four hours of sleep a night or MJ, you think he only got four hours of sleep? They, they were the best. They knew when to rest. So yes, fight through the tired. And when we say tired, I think we're hitting more of the, the fucking like the zombie brain like fuck man i you know i worked all day still gotta go train uh it's gonna be a long week of fucking gym work gym work gym work gym work right? yeah, that's what i'm referring to that's what we're talking about so i i just want to make sure there's a clear difference of you know rest when you need to i i actually this week was a bad great example i always do two days on one day off three days on one day off this week i did five days on by the fifth day I was fucking, I was, I was a feeling my body does not respond great. If I train hard for five days straight, yeah. I need two hard days in the gym, rest three hard days in the gym, rest. That's how my body works. So make sure you know when to rest. Yeah. That's um, the difference. I think we're talking about is like being tired and being depleted or being like fucking overdone, run down. Yeah. Those are the yeah. words I think of when I say that, because that's what I want to hear when somebody's feeling like that. Like when they're just saying they're tired, I'm like, well, fucking push it. But if they're like, dude, I'm fucking, my body's aching. I'm fucking, I'm burning. I, I, I lost my appetite. I can't sleep. Like, okay, we need to take some time off because now the cortisol's up. Shit's happening. You have to take time off. Like, yeah, there's a big difference. Yeah. Four to six weeks out from show, you should be tired all the fucking time. Your body yeah. fat's so low, it's in a survival state. So that's expected. Yeah. What do you think, Chris? Well, I'm thinking, like, I don't know how to – I can't tell the difference because I know if I didn't have Patrick, I'd probably just still go into the gym seven days a week, especially if I was getting ready for a show. Because I can remember when I was, you know, it was last year and the year before when I was just competed all year, I literally would feel like death. And I would just go to the gym with that mental fatigue and just push through those workouts knowing that I was tired. But I was like, okay, everybody in that top five is suffering too, so I need to keep mm -hmm. pushing now, I had my days when I got to the gym and I was just so irritable and I just, the, the, the sight of anybody would just irritate me. And I remember just, just walking on a treadmill trying to warm up and I guess like, you know what? I need to go home and go to sleep. And that's what I would do. But it took me overdoing everything for me to realize that. Luckily now, Patrick, I have programmed rest days. Like he doesn't let me go longer than three days without taking a rest. So I'm not the person to consult when it comes to resting. I'm horrible at it because... I always want to go in every show, look at my absolute best, and I kind of overdo it and I overthink it. And so this is why I couldn't train myself or coach myself because I would over diet and over train. As, as Knox always says, when he's getting bigger, somebody else is getting smaller. <laughs> <laughs> I got two more I want to do, but I've really got to pee. So carry on. I'll be right back. I got to go. I can't hold it anymore. I, th I think that's gonna be that's gonna be your new new quote, bro. <laughs> well, I'm getting bigger, you're getting smaller, Chris Knox. <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's like the one thing though. Like I was thinking about, um, you know, people just in general, and they if they want to get clean up their if they don't want to get on a specific diet, I think they just need to use common sense when going shopping. Just make all your meals at the house. I know most people when you tell them to eat, you know, four or six meals a day, that's insane to them. They can just make all their meals at the house. That I just you know, defeat half the problems right there. They'll lose weight just by eating their own meals they cook at the house. Avoid buying pre-made shit that's full of artificial sweeteners. Don't buy frozen meals. Don't buy canned food. Just make all your meals. And a lot of people lose a lot of weight just by doing that. And drink plenty of water. Don't drink your calories. So I'm going to tell you what I did in 2013, all right? I'm telling the world what I did because it's a flaw. I was a bro, all right? So as a bro, you know, this is me 2013. This is before I met Mike. This is before all I did was I came back from deployment. And I knew that I wanted to be a bodybuilder and all I had was bodybuilding.com. This is before like YouTube, I think even had channels. It was just a bunch yeah. of shit there that we could watch. Right. So I didn't know anything. And I was doing the Jay Cutler um, shortcut to size program. I think it was called. And I would wake up at three in the morning and uh, excuse me, I work up at two 30 because I had to be at work at four work out from three to like four and then get to work by like five. That was, 
that was in 2013. I remember eating, this is no bullshit, an entire fucking bag of bacon a day because <laughs> bacon's got a lot of protein in it and it's yeah. a lot of a lot of a lot of fat that's gonna give me energy, right? Yeah. And I need all of that protein and fat to build muscle. Then I would eat candy all day long too, in between meals, because insulin's the most anabolic hormone, right? So 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 I'm eating candy. I remember it's sitting eating popsicles. I'm just getting fat, but in my mind, I'm getting big. Like I'm like, man, I almost look like Lou Ferrigno right now. You know what I mean? Like, I, I gotta I gotta send you, I'll find the photo and I'll send it to you guys. I was a joke, but that's because I mean, you know, you didn't have channels like this or to keep stuff real. All I had was is a magazine and some fucking article that I read once that some asshole wrote saying that in the 80s they ate a lot of fatty foods and a lot of protein. And I was like, oh, I, I guess that makes sense. Well, it's, you know, just even like it's, it's, you know, these teenagers, these young guys coming up in the industry and they want to compete in this bodybuilder and they're watching these old videos of like Ronnie Comer or Jay Cutler post workout eating all these fucking sweets and stuff is very deceiving. You don't know yeah. these guys are running DH and insulin and, you know, they're eating six times a day. You just think, okay, if I eat, you know, ice cream or eat a bowl of cereal or Pop Tarts after my workout, I can get buff too. No, there's a lot more that goes into it than that. This is a yeah, lot that's more. that's a that's a big misconception of, uh, and to go off that other question is is you know lifting heavy you have to lift heavy to get big I mean I think Ronnie Coleman I think it, it, when I was in the two, early two thousands when I was in high school you know Ronnie Coleman was Mr Olympia and look how he lifted so here's the thing about I think about bodybuilding and I think it's only bodybuilding is is that every male is a fucking expert every single fucking guy I know is a fucking expert who has an uncle who once won something, he's a pro bodybuilder and he knows everything. So now I know everything. And I think that's where all these misconceptions come along. Like, I, and I, I was on the ship and I'm sitting there and this is Marine next to me. And he stops and goes, no, your body only can absorb 30 grams of protein and it shits the rest out. It only absorbs 30. So I was like, Junior, let me ask you something. Uh, you're telling me that big Rammy only can get 30 grams at a time. And that little skinny guy there only, and at 31, your body just goes, well, you tell me then. I was, and then I just fucking dropped some knowledge on him. And he's like, hey, man, uh, yeah, yeah, I never, never thought about it. Like, you know, and that's, where, that's where all this bro science comes from. Is yeah. that for some reason, every male thinks that they're a fucking guru. You know, I, I knew everything about bodybuilding in 2013 because I watched Pumping Iron and I read a couple articles from bodybuilding.com and an NPC guy wrote, I'm like, oh, this must be right. Shit and piss in a bottle. That was it, bro. You know, so. <laughs> I think I got all my, I learned all my stuff from like, you know, muscle, muscle, uh, muscle, muscle development magazines. And I yeah. know it was like one article that to taught me how to train. I remember I did like, I started isolating each muscle groups. And eating six times a day, but was pretty much drinking six shakes a day and taking an animal pack with some cell tech on the side, you know. That was my old stack in high school, you know. I remember reading the Olympia cycle in muscular development. I didn't even know what half that shit was. And I thought yeah. I knew about all that shit. And I read it and I was like, what side of it? What the fuck is this? I was like, man, you're gonna be dead. But I used to read that one a lot when back when muscular development didn't suck, when they had lots of good knowledge in there. Yeah. Um, speaking about lifting, here's one. A lot of females say this. I actually, you know, you know what, what's sad enough, what, what, what I've, what's sad enough is I've had guys say this too. And I had a guy and I'll, I'll tell you the question. Then I'll tell you my answer to him is he was coming in to lose weight for his PRT. And he said, no, I don't want to get too bulky. The guy's already <sighs> overweight. And he's like, I don't want to, I don't want to lift too hard and get too bulky. And I was like, bro. Why is that fucking easy? Like, if you turn into Ronnie Coleman overnight, you better tell me so I can take some notes because I'm just, I know, I didn't know what the fuck you did. Like, I've been trying to get too big. I've been yeah. trying to get too big for seven years. And these, like, you know, I tell women, like, if you're, if you're not going to be Iris Kyle in a fucking month, like, those women have to try harder to get that. And they work at that for years and years for you to accidentally do it because you fucking got a gym membership would be a goddamn insult to all the work they did. And yeah. plus whatever you do, do you can undo. I mean, it's, and, and honestly, the intensity of the training and stuff is going to help, but if you're not eating stuff to build the muscle, it ain't happening. So yeah. you can train all you want, but if you don't eat the building blocks, it ain't happening. So, you know, and those were the answers I would give these people, but I get this. It's like another wall you're putting up verbally to keep yourself from doing something that you, claim you want to do but you don't want to do the fucking work so you come up you 
in the same sentence as I want to do this, you're giving reasons why you don't. So you can fucking back down. It's like, well, I want to get in shape. So if I don't want to get too bulky, well, God, I'm yo, I wish I had your fucking genetics, bro. I know. Yeah. It's just that easy. All you got to do is just work out and you get huge. That was the case. Every, thought, everybody would be walking around looking like Ronnie Coleman. That's what I thought. I had, a, I had a client like that once who just thought, just work out and get big. He went up to Dexter Jackson was like, I, I want to be, he was, he was straight, he was straight from Africa. This guy had great genetics, by the way, like phenomenal genetics. He was 36 years old and he just started working out with me and he would flex. I would watch his muscle fibers. I'm like, man, you're, you're, you're great. But he was 140 pounds. And he goes up at 36 years old. He goes up to Dexter Jackson and goes, I want to be Mr. Olympia. Dexter looked at him and was like, you need like at least 10 years for that, bro. He's like, yeah, one day. I'm like, dude, what are you, nine years old? Like, yeah, you're some little nine-year-old kid. Like, hey, yeah, you got, you can be anything you want to be. I mean, you're a 36 over here. Go, I want to be Mr. Olympia. Like, I got to get the, like, oh, my God, I got to get the hell out of here. Or I know going back on what Jed said, um, you know, when somebody, I've heard this plenty of times. I want to get in shape. I want to get big, but I don't want to be your size. I don't want to get too bulky. You know, that's I, I want to be careful with that. And I'm like, and you think in your head, it's like, do you know how much fucking work goes in the trying to get to a certain size? I'm like, it's hard to even maintain. Like when you get past like the 230 mark, to maintain that you got to eat. You got to eat consistently. If you don't, if I know if I don't eat, if I miss a couple meals, I drop five or six pounds like that. Yeah. So if I'm not consistent with my meals, I lose weight really fast. And I'm like, guess can you imagine guys like Marcus Roll and stuff? Dude. Like, you just can't roll over and get that big, you know, like, oh, eat two meals a day and do that for two years and think you'll get Marcus Rule sauce, you know. Marcus Rule was a goddamn freak. I think he was underappreciated, man. That guy was ridiculous. I can't imagine. I, I feel like I hate eating right now. I can't imagine how much that man had to eat. Dude, I saw videos where he was stuffing, like, ground beef and peppers. as like when he was doing his low carb and he was baking it and just eating them like that. Because they get all this shit in. That's uh, I, I hate eating. I can't imagine that. The next time somebody gives you that bullshit, Chris, uh, you, when, when I hear that kind of stuff, when they see my clients, like, well, I don't want to get like her. Like, well, think of it like this. If I can have this girl finish just a couple of points from turning pro at a fucking USA's, then obviously I can help you get your baby fat off. By the way, your baby's 16 years old. So obviously with all everything you try is not fucking work. Obviously I can do that. If I can do this, I can do the bullshit tax you got me. So that's the mindset you should have going and looking for a trainer or looking for someone to help you. It's somebody that can do the extreme so they can at least help, help have you do it, you know, have you reach your goal in a good amount of time. So, yeah, those are a couple of excuses I, that fucking chat my ass. Like, you don't, don't want to get too big. Get the fuck out of here. Um, see, we got time for, I think, one more. Dibs, um, I think this is a good one because people have misconceptions about eating fruit and shit. So you said um, natural sugar is okay to have through it when dieting or trying to lose body fat. Uh, so in off-season, let's start with off-season first when you're not in a diet. I say uh, it's okay to have a couple pieces of fruit a day. Uh, I do blueberries and uh, pineapple is another pineapple one. I do actually – I eat pineapple right now with every single meal because the bromine in it actually – helps digest so if you ever eat pineapple and they feel you're like your tongue starting to sting that's yeah. actually the bromelain breaking down your tongue your protein so yeah, yeah. so that's why I, i'll do seven ounces of chicken i'll do four ounces of pineapple now when you're cutting and you're trying to lose fat you don't want to raise the insulin levels you want to keep them kind of low so despite the fact that it is a natural sugar and it gets digested by the liver there's, it's still sugar at the end of the day, sugar at the end of the day, is sugar. So you, you want to mm. avoid it. Um, stay away from the sugars when you're trying to get fat. Um, I see a lot of people say, well, it's natural. I'm like, well, so is sugar cane. I mean, it doesn't mean it's good for you. Um, you, 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 well, you need, you need, you need fruit. I was like, well, you know, you can take a multivitamin, like four months of not having fruit. Is not going to fucking make you malnutritious? It's not. Um, so no, uh, when you're losing fat, no, that, and that's, that's my, my principle. Yeah. This is um, oh, go ahead, Chris. When it comes to fruit, you know, like for the past three or four years, I've always had so much and I've actually had like two cups of fruit a day, even going into two weeks out from the show. So, but then again, it's the, the fruits I have are lower, it's lower glycemic. It is blueberries and, you know, you know, cherries and I actually have strawberries, and stuff like that. And I, today, I know, I know I'm having bananas and stuff like that. Like, I don't think fruit's necessarily a bad thing. 
depending on if it's lower glycemic. If it's not, well, I don't know. It just depends on the time of the day, but I know it's quite a few bodybuilders that a couple weeks out, they eat, uh, what's his name? Um, bigger guy, he eats probably two cups, so if not more, he, his entire diet's based off fruit. So you can get oh, shredded wow. off eating fruit. Hmm. And I think it is such thing as a, a banana diet as well. That a lot of bodybuilders use. It would have to deal with uh, it would have to deal with the muscle preservation of the insulin spike and go on low calorie or something like that. Yes. For it, the science behind it would have to be around that, I think, for it to work. Um, okay, what's the, what's the coach um, that trains uh, Justin Rodriguez, Alex Rivera? Um, no, I, I think of a bodybuilder's name right now, but he's big on fruit. He eats so much of it, and I didn't I didn't believe that you can get lean off of it until I saw he, him actually do his diet, and it's just. It's crazy the amounts of fruit this man eats while he's getting ready for a show. Really, I like. But I, don't, I don't understand how that would work with all. The, I mean, I know there's fiber in the fruit, but there's also a lot of sugar. So if you're eating a lot of fruit, yeah, the fiber's there to you know help keep it as a lower glycemic index. But once the liver is full of carbs, and you know what happens, so I'm just curious about the science behind it. I guess I look at it like it's, it's, at the end of the day, it's still a carbohydrate. That's how I look at it. Okay. And if you just, if like, it's just like, it's a simple carb. If it's a simple carb, it's just like eating jasmine white rice. It's a simple carbohydrate. It's going to be a fast acting. It's going to spike your insulin. It's going to be in your system, out of your system quick. So I can see you getting shredded off of it too. But I wouldn't advise abusing it, but I think you can get shredded off of it. But if you put jasmine rice with like ground beef or turkey and vegetables, it's going to slow down the insulin release. So it's going to act more like brown rice. So if you eat it by itself, now that's a different story. Okay. Hmm. That's the difference. And it might work the same way with fruit. You know, it's just that if you eat it with food, it can, it can digest slower. I mean, lot, and you're also, let's also take into consideration, look at, look at Knox's body and look at the person usually probably asking is not usually in shape. You know, I'll get a lot of people that are extremely overweight and fat and asking to eat fruit. And like, you know, I would say, Hey, you probably need to discipline yourself to get off of sugar altogether for a while. And then, you know, you know, it, it, you're not as ripped as you are. You can, your body can metabolism probably can handle it. Somebody with a slower metabolism may not be able to handle the fruit and maybe convert the fat. So there's also so many different variables of body types in there as well. So individually, you know, I say me personally, I'm saying just no when cutting fat because I don't know the individual's body type. But yeah. you know, if you know your body type, you know you can handle it, and you, know, you got a fast metabolism, you can probably get a, maybe you can get away with it. I agree. I, still, I agree 100. percent if uh, even if somebody was trying to lose weight and they wanted to eat white rice, I would put them on brown rice at first because of the fiber. It's harder for your body to digest, like break down, therefore it's a more calories. So I will put them a more fibrous, complex carb versus a more simple, you know, carb like white rice or white potatoes. Now so, I'll I'll counter you on that. Um, now if I get somebody, now you guys you guys understand I get a lot of everyday people too, but even then I treat them like athletes and I work them up to athletes because they want these results fast as possible until they have to act but I have to start them somewhere. So if someone's eating two meals a day, I'm not going to give them six meals of brown rice. That shit will be in their stomach all fucking day. It's just like, I don't give them vegetables with meals until their metabolism gets up. So yeah. I will give them lower protein and white rice. And because I learned this from reading a Lee Haney article of all people. <clears throat> and uh, it that shit digests fast and no shit. It'll start speeding up and speeding. Their blood sugar will drop faster. So they get hungry. So you put in more and put in more. Then it gets to where they're eating their max amount of food and they're still hungry. Then you start adding vegetables and switching to brown rice and stuff. Now, if you were to come to me, that'd be different because I already know all your shit. I know you can start at a certain point. But if people are not used to eating a lot and they need to eat a lot, give them faster digesting shit because the faster digests and their blood sugar drops and triggers that hunger, the quicker you can work their diet up to where they're supposed to be. Huh. It's um, It works fucking awesome, honestly. It's, it's – um, and it's cool because you see these people that are overweight eating like three, 350 grams of carbs or dropping weight. And then, you know, once they get up to a certain point, then we start switching things around. So it gives you an extra ace up the sleeve too when the dieting starts slowing down. Hmm. Now, as far as the fruit guy, I would like to take a look at his blood, his like A1C and his blood sugar levels to see how they look from all that fruit going in there. He may look good on the outside, but I like to make sure he looks good on the inside too. I know I had a scare. Like I was checking my blood glucose last week and, uh, my glucose meter through an era eight code and I looked that up and it said I was like hyperglycemia. Like what well, it said something ridiculous. So I checked it a few more times and my my fasted blood sugar was uh 68, thankfully. But yeah, scared the crap at me because I know not I put enough it. on there. Yeah, it it's still scared though. I wouldn't got my blood work done just in case. It scared me so bad. 
that happens to me when I don't get a big enough drop of blood to drop on it. It gives me an error code, and then I have to do it again. Well, it's a scary feeling. I was checking my blood all that day. I was like, okay, what's going on? Because I know I'm taking it in like close to 900 carbs a day. I'm like, am I like becoming like carb insulin resistant or what? What's going on? That's what I was thinking. Yeah, so it I, scared I, the hell out of me. I had some blood sugar issues and I had to fix it. And I'm glad I. I got it. I got the glucometer and started messing because I learned how to bring it down real fucking quick. I was actually impressed with how quick I got it fixed. Now, mm. how'd you bring it down? Like, uh, I was, uh, if you, did you just run like, did you, like, I'm, I'm just going to ask, like, did you just, um, start using like a longer, like acting insulin or I used, um, IGF one LR three to okay. get the insulin sensitivity up. And then I went to, uh, I went to brown rice for a while and then towards the end, I just cut it out except for the meals that needed carbs and I ate fats with the rest of them. And then it dropped to where an hour after I ate, it would be like 73. Oh, wow. That's good. Yeah. Okay. And it took maybe a couple of weeks, but I started with the least amount to do and it started dropping to like the nineties. I was like, fuck it. I'll just cut all the carbs out except pre post-workout. And then it went down quicker after that. Yeah, okay. the, the, the IGF-1 helps with the insulin sensitivity. So I did that. And then after all that was done, I got off of it and everything. And I all took right. glycolog too. <clears throat> okay. You know, like I, the glycolog acts just like the berberine, right? It increases the sensitivity so your body absorbs. So it's almost like um, how AP750 work by USP labs where it turn on your GLUT4 receptors and pulling all the food. Kind of does the same thing from what I understand. Okay. All right. So I know I'm, I, I know I don't have the glyco log in my diet. I just have the berberine and stuff. And I was just curious if that acted the same. Yeah, um, I, I use it when I need it. But ah, oh, son of a bitch, fucking mouse is dying. Um, shit. You still there, Dominic? Yeah, I'm here. I'm listening. This is a fucking mouse is about dead. I'm trying to find this guy. God here damn it! Hold on, son of a bitch. All right. Let's see. I'm gonna message him. Hey man, I heard you die. You wanna try mine out? <laughs> tablespoon of <laughs> tablespoon of shit. <laughs> Mixed with some piss. <laughs> man, this fucking guy's lost his mind in Hawaii, dude. <laughs> Goodness, do you know that guy? Who? Do you know that person? Whom? That's uh messaging you right now. Did somebody send something in? No, no, no. Yeah. I was just uh I, I was saying I was gonna message the fucking uh I was gonna message the fucking whoever you're sending me and say, "Hey, your fruit diet. Try my shit piss diet." <laughs> I know what's funny is I get always gonna ask what kind of supplements you take. Like that's the number one question. I never ask diet. Never gonna ask what what kind of trainings, what subs you take, bro. So I always respond with, "How many meals do you eat?" One, maybe two, if I'm lucky. I go supplements are not for you. That's it. If you're not eating, you ain't eating at least I would say four meals a day. Supplements are not for you. Well, that's the thing. Like, I've heard some crazy stuff. Like, hey, man, what type of pre, like, man, what type of pre workout do you take to get that big? And I'm like, I look at him. I'm like, is he messing with me? Or you know, because nah. it's like that's like a luxury product to me. Like, you don't need a pre workout in my head. Or and like, I know me when it comes to basic. But if I didn't have any money, I would just use fish oil. And I probably wouldn't. I wouldn't even buy whey protein. I would buy chicken in place of whey protein. You know, I would just buy like whole food versus you know anything synthetic. Cause I believe in eating your meals is better than anything that's like made in a, you know, a capsule or, you know, yeah. so that's, that's how I look at it. I'm a bit of a stem junkie. So I, I, uh, I love my pre-workout. Like I've, I've, I've trained without it, but I mean, I've been taking pre-workout since 2002. Like I had my very first scoop of super pump 250. And it just was like, I felt it was like the first time you get pussy, you know what I mean? Like I couldn't go my life without it anymore. <laughs> So well, well, uh, well, okay. Going back to the pre-workout, um, uh, <laughs> I think I think I think the first time I used that was a sophomore in high school was that BSN shit, and I remember pre-workout was like a new thing back then. And I remember it was like this big ass box, and everybody we, in class we had gym class, and I remember we it was like passed around the BSN scooper, and I remember that shit was like crack. In explode, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, oh yeah, in explode, yeah, in explode. Like the first formula, it probably had that one three dimethylene in it or whatnot. It was really good stuff. But the crash was insane too, because after I would work out, I would always sleep in my next class, my history class. So, so I don't like high really school anyway, so I wouldn't know. Was that? I, I slept know. all through high school anyway. So, <laughs> only I did in high school was work out, and then my senior year I had to, you know, actually do work because <laughs> I, I never did. I didn't take all my main courses. <laughs> yep. 
super pump as uh that, that was i think what started my weightlifting like you know when i met rich gaspari in august he had to hear all my super pump stories he's like man and like is that shit you just make up so i'm over here like yeah so i was on deployment and shit actually this actually happened uh we had a fucking emergency in the middle of the ocean as a rescue swimmer so i got up at two in the morning ran right to the locker and i would keep two scoops of super pump with a water bottle next to my search and rescue thing. As I'm getting ready, I would, I, my, I went to the quote, pump to the max. I would get pumped to the max right before going out and I, and I needed it. Like that shit saved my fucking life, man. I, I love fucking super pump. How is the new aggression one out? Cause I thought about getting it the other day. <laughs> How was it? Yeah. It literally tastes like house music, dude. It tastes like fucking the It tastes shit. like house music. Now, it's, do you cycle on and cycle off of that shit? I'm curious. Uh, I, um, I take like, so I do it interesting. So on my rest days, I'll just do one cup of coffee in the morning. Okay. And so I'll do two days pre-workout one day, just a cup of coffee, two days pre-workout. I never take more. I, I do two weeks a year with no caffeine. So I don't do any, yeah, two weeks a year I do. And that's when I, I just completely finish my show. I do the Dave Palumbo detox and I actually invented, I wrote up, wrote up my own detox program where I just want to you know, rest and clean my body out. I eat only three, four meals a day for about three weeks. And I fast a whole bunch of shit and I do no caffeine. And then I go back to taking it, but I've been taking it for so long that it's become, you know, addicted and, you know, it's a part of my life. I, you know, I love my pre-workout. I'm, you know, I'm not ashamed. It's part of who I am. I'm not afraid to admit that. That was kind of like last year. I got addicted to that shit called Kratom. I was using a lot of Kratom because, you know, I was working those 12 hour shifts and I was in school full time and, I was like four, I was in prep all year. So I was like, okay, I started using green Bali uh, uh, Kratom. And it was just like, it would just take away my hunger and it would make me feel good. It would give me this nice euphoric feeling. I got addicted I to that it. crap. I, I can't work it. out without it. What's that? I love that shit. It's good stuff, man. It is good stuff. But it, like, I was, I, I was telling Patrick about it. And he's like, I don't, I don't just get off of it. Now he's got he off of it. Why doesn't he like it? Well, you know, like he didn't say anything negative about it. I don't think he said it. it causes mental fatigue, which I already knew, but it is highly addictive and it can be hard on your liver. If that's with abuse. But other than that, you know, if you overdose on it, it's just going to give you diarrhea or you're just going to puke. But I say I see more benefits than negative negative things from it because if you're like um <clears throat> excuse me, if you have like um if you do a lot of so like public speaking, it takes away the anxiety anxiety for that. If you just anything, it takes the anxiety away. It just makes you it depending on the strain you have, or if you have sleep sleep problems, you can take red bali and it, you get these nice, nice deep sleep. It's like so many different strands that you can use and you can mix them and you can actually stack it with like coffee or black black pepper and an amplifies it, or you can stack it with cinnamon mm -hmm. and it amplifies the effect. It's good stuff. So Dominic, if you if you ever use kratom, it's really good. Like um, when you're like really like four weeks out and you've got that mental fatigue and you're really depleted and you're just very moody, start using kratom. It'll take it, you won't even feel like you're dieting. You'll be super yeah. social. I'm happy. definitely gonna try it out. Yeah, dude, um, I got I got a white white indigo kind. I only need like one pill, which is not even like two grams, and I'm fucking good for most of the day. <laughs> yeah, it's good stuff. It's it's like. You take it, and it's like I can, only I can compare it to is like the movie Limitless. Like everything brightens up, and it's like everything's just you can just think everything just the clarity's come. It just comes. I love it. Um, speaking of super pump, you know <laughs> what today is, right? Today is the seven oh, year anniversary right. of the death of the Ultimate Warrior. Seven years ago, it was that long. Seven already? years ago, two thousand fourteen. God okay. Almighty! On October eighth. All right. And it is the same week that Super Pump 3.0 came out. Just saying. It's a little too much of a conspiracy for me. Like Super Pump 3.0 came out. I waited years for it. And I think like the ashes of the Ultimate Warrior, because I walk around, you know, you know, calling the powers of the warrior in between sets. So just saying, it's a little too weird. I um I was always a Hogan fan, but at the same time, I look back and I'm like, if you were going to have somebody that could beat Hogan, it had to be somebody, the character like the Ultimate Warrior. He was, man. He was always fucking psyched. He was always pumped, you know, run, running into the ring. You know, he would get everyone going. And yeah, he beat Hulk Hogan, WrestleMania six. 
And uh, actually you got to get a hell of a legacy. And every every year, I always I always wore I worked out today. I wore my Ultimate Warrior shirt. Only wear it one day a year, April eighth. So just, just what we do, represent. <laughs> And he died right after getting in the Hall of Fame, too, or right after him and Vince made up. He came on WWF and did a speech, and he fucking died the next day. Yeah, he did. And uh, I weird. talked to some wrestlers about it, and they said that uh, it, it, this is not confirmed. This is just fucking what some old school wrestlers that were saying with that, like, he went there, and they were all doing blow, because they, they all did, the old guys did blow backstage. He did a couple lines, and fucking next day, when he came up, because once you go up, you drop, it fucking killed his heart. Shit. That's yeah, that was never a confirmed. Like, there was no confirmed how he just, oh, if he just died. But they were saying he got back with the boys. They were just doing hits of coke in the back. And then next day, it just fucking killed him. I mean, that was the the gem of the 80s was cocaine. A lot, of, a lot of good guitar players came out of cocaine. What was the wrestler's uh, name that used to take the people? He used to take people and put them on his back and shake them. Lex uh, Luger. Really much, torture yeah, rack. Lex Luger. The torture rack. He's still in a wheelchair, right? He had a blood clot, and I think it no, he's off. he's just skinny as fuck now, man. After the Elizabeth incident, I think he went to jail for a little while oh. when Elizabeth died in his townhouse. Yeah, she overdosed I feel like on he's drugs. Paralyzed, though. I think he's paralyzed though. I don't know. I just um I saw him on an interview and I could hardly recognize him because he was so small. And um, you remember when that happened, Diz, where Elizabeth died in his townhouse and they yep. were all fucked up on drugs? Yeah. Yep. They caught all the steroids in his house and he got arrested. It was When I was a kid, I thought he was a monster. Now I'm like, bro, you're small, bro. <laughs> like, look at him now. I'm like, he ain't that big. That's <laughs> <laughs> of all those movies. He watched those old John Claude Van Damme movies and, you know, those Sylvester Stallone Sloan movies. Like, growing up, you think those guys are like these mass monsters. And, like, now I'm like, oh, okay. Okay, they look okay, <laughs> you know. It's not bad, yeah. <laughs> All right, well, um, I think that'll do it for tonight. And um, hope we got some of the myths and stuff cleared up for everybody watching. And um, we'll be back next week, most likely Thursday, I think. Is everybody still free for next Thursday? Yep. Awesome. All right, so guys, like, subscribe, uh, spread around, tell your friends, help us get this built up so that uh, we can keep doing this and put more into it so we can get more out there for you guys. Until next time, everybody, take it easy. There you guys.